Hi, it's Paul here from selfoutforlife.com and today I'm going to help you discover what it takes to become a winner. Now, winning and losing are similar. They are both habits. It's interesting how one person can have all the advantages, have all the luck and yet still not be a winner in life, while someone else who has all the odds stacked against them turns out to be a massive winner. So to be a winner, you need to develop the habits that allow you to win consistently. And that's what this video is all about. So I'm now going to cover nine habits that will help you become a winner in life. So the first habit is setting goals. Winners set goals, period. And winners set goals that are motivating, inspiring, exciting, but also realistic with sensible deadlines. So they set smart goals. So that's specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound. And I've done a whole video on goal setting, which goes really, really in depth into the whole goal setting process. And that will appear just up here now. So do go and check out that video. Now, also winners will focus on the what rather than the how. So they'll put much more of their attention on what they want to achieve and less on how they're going to achieve it. They'll also be flexible to change their approach to achieve their goals. So they won't go with one specific method. They're willing to change and try different things as they need to. So the second one is to create habits that support your goals. So when you start a new project or something that's really exciting to you, you're going to have passion and excitement that's going to drive you initially. The problem is that won't last. And I think this is why a lot of people dabble with different business opportunities and dabble through life generally, is they get really enthusiastic and passionate about something. But once you've done it for a few weeks, that begins to wane. And that's natural. That, that's always going to happen. So when that happens, you need discipline and willpower to take its place. But even discipline and willpower can only take you so far. So what you also need is to develop really good habits because what those good habits do is they replace willpower and discipline because it becomes something that you just naturally do. So once it's a habit, you just do it even when you don't want to do it or even when you don't feel like doing it. So that's really important. So let me give you some examples. So let's say you want to lose weight. So you develop good eating and exercise habits and you just do those consistently. You want to get really good at a sport or a hobby. So you practice consistently. It just becomes part of your identity, part of you. And if you want to improve you, you want to improve yourself, then you consistently practice, you know, visualization, affirmations, changing thoughts and all the sort of things that uh, people talk about in personal development to help you improve yourself. So the third one is to get rid of things. So lots of things can get in your way. That could be possessions, that could be activities, it could be other people. So you need to make room for success. And you do that by minimizing obstacles and distractions. So ask yourself, what is getting in my way of me becoming a winner? So the next one, number four, is to get help from other people. So you can achieve great things on your own, but it can be very lonely. It can take a long time and it can be very frustrating as well. So it's much quicker and easier to enlist the help of others to help you achieve your success. And I'm talking about people here who have already achieved what you want to achieve. So they have the experience, they've done the work and they can help you achieve what they've already achieved. So here I'm talking about, you know, coaches, mentors, uh, colleagues and friends, anyone that has achieved what you want to achieve, whatever that is in life for you. And um, I always prefer to learn from those kind of people. Now, if you don't have access to those people in person, then if they've written a book, read it. If they've done an online course, buy it and go through it. Or maybe you're even lucky enough that they might do a live seminar in your local town or city. And if that's the case, go along to it and learn from them that way. You know, whatever you do, it's really important that you don't reinvent the wheel, that you learn the shortcuts that successful people already know because they've already done what you want to achieve. And you can also take advantage of their mistakes as well and their experience. So you don't have to make the same mistakes yourself and you can learn from what they've done. So I think that's super important. So number five is to accept responsibility. So accept responsibility for whatever happens. When you accept responsibility, this gives you control and also the ability to change it. Now, it's also important that you take responsibility for all actions and decisions that you make, even if they've been recommended by a coach or a mentor, you still take responsibility for whatever you decide to implement. So always make decisions that are right for you and then act on them. 
Okay, number six is to embrace failure. Anything meaningful in life involves some failure. The key is to change your perspective on failure. Change it to think of failure is only feedback. Failure is feedback, it's a learning opportunity. It helps you learn what doesn't work and the key is to learn without dwelling on the failure. That's really the crucial uh, tip here. So, and also the more action you take, the more failures and success you will have. So just by taking more action, you're going to experience more failures and talk to any really successful person and they will tell you that to be true for them as well. So to be a winner, you've got to do lots, you've got to fail lots and you've got to learn from each experience. So number seven is to use your time wisely. Time is a great equalizer. Doctors, entrepreneurs, politicians, plumbers, refuge collectors, all have 24 hours in a day, just like you and I. So you've got to work out what is it you need to do that's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. What is going to give you the biggest result, either right now or in the long term? And once you figure out what that is, you need to allocate chunks of time to do the tasks with no interruptions. So no interruptions means no surfing the internet while you're doing the task. It means no checking notifications on your phone. It means not answering phone calls unless they are really crucial to your business activities. And a great technique that I learned recently is called the Pomodoro technique. And the way that is, is you spend 25 minutes focusing on one thing to the exclusion of everything else. And then you take a five minute break and then you do another 25 minutes and then you take another five minute break. 25 minutes seems to be just a really good amount of time to focus on one thing. So I encourage you to give that a go. Number eight is to keep learning. You know, knowledge helps us make the best decisions in our lives. And knowledge is so easy these days. With the internet, it's so easy to learn what you need to learn. And it's learning that keeps you moving forward. And it also ensures that your skills are up to date as well. However, there is a caveat here, and that is learning and action. So if you spend too much time learning, you're going to begin to feel overwhelmed and frustrated. And especially if you don't have the time to implement all the things that you're learning. So I always recommend that you have a ratio of learning to action. When you're very new, let's say you're you're starting a, a new business and there's a lot to learn. So let's say, um, you know, when I was starting my hypnotherapy career, I spent, you know, 90 to 100 percent of my time learning because I had to learn to get the qualification. And even after that, I spent a lot of time learning about marketing. So I was probably spending 80 percent of my time learning. But then over time, as I got more experience, I was able to reduce that. And now I probably spend 80 percent acting and doing things and 20 percent learning. OK, so as you get better at something, you'll spend more time acting and less time learning. But it's important that you consciously set a balance between the two and stick to it. Now, number nine and the last winning habit is perseverance. Now, you've probably heard these two quotes before. Winners never quit and you can't lose if you don't quit. Now, I don't completely buy into either of those quotes. I think there's a time when you're doing something and if you're not getting results and you've been doing it for a few months, then maybe quitting is the right thing to do. You know, maybe you're doing a particular fitness program or a diet program to lose weight and you're not getting the results. After a few months, it probably is the right time to try a different approach. So you're still sticking with achieving that ultimate goal. You're just trying something different. So I think that's OK. But the key thing is that you keep going towards your ultimate goals and you will become a winner if you persist. So to help you do that, you need to become a finisher. So think of small things you need to do, small tasks such as cleaning or writing reports and get into the habit of just doing it and keeping at it until you've finished it. That will then form a habit and that message will go to your subconscious mind that you're the kind of person that finishes things and that will over time become part of your sense of identity. So then when you're working on your bigger goals, you will begin to just get into the habit of finishing things. So that's really important as well. So really to sum up here, you will win when you have clear goals and you develop useful habits and you persist until success is achieved. Winning isn't necessarily any harder than losing. It's just different. So begin today to cultivate the habits that you need to win every time in your life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or do leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. And do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the bell notification. That way you will always be notified whenever I release future videos. And if you haven't already, do go to my website. That is selfhelpforlife.com. 
On there, you will find many blog posts that accompany these videos, a link to my podcast, social media sites as well. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I look forward to sharing more great content with you very soon. Bye for now.